Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our watch night service. Uh, the Bible tells us many times to be on watch, on guard and alert. Uh, thank you for resisting the urge to go to bed. And thank you for cleaning your teeth. Uh, the service will flow as, as, much as, as much as it can. Thank you to Max um, and Matthew for sorting out bits and bobs. There's various video bits to clip in, different people doing different readings. Um, we'll get there in the end. Uh, each, each bit will be unannounced and it should flow through. And hopefully if the timing's right, I should get 10 seconds to do a sermon before midnight and the final celebration and the lighting of the final candle. And our first video is a clip where we light our Advent candles. Thank you, Max. Advent is season of love. Our Advent ringing candles are symbols of the love of Christ brings into the world. The ring reminds us of the unbroken love of God. The greenery reminds us of new life in Christ. The candles proclaim the light of Christ coming into the world. We pray that as we light this candle, our lives may be filled with love as we receive you, God with us. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, as we gather in the dark on this day into which you sent your light, we ask that the familiar words as we hear them the familiar words as we sing them will touch our hearts afresh and inspire us to seek your light in our lives and prepare us as we celebrate your great gift to us. So be with us now in this time together yet apart and bless us all we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Sorry about that, folks. First reading this evening is from Isaiah chapter 52, beginning to read at verse 7. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices, together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. Burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. birth of Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the child to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Thank you. 
The Gospel according to John, beginning at the first verse of the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognise him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the only begotten Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Well, when I arrived in the parish on the 24th of March, the day after lockdown began, I didn't think on the 24th of December we'd still be Zooming. It's been hard work. It's been a strange year, hasn't it? And even Christmas, which we'd half hoped might be semi-normal, has gone down the pan a bit, hasn't it? And for all our efforts, it's not quite the same, is it? as actually physically seeing each other, being able to wish each other a happy Christmas and so on. 
normally at the end of this service, once we got past midnight and the final verse of, oh, come on, you faithful, there'd be a big scrap, lots of hugs, lots of handshaking, uh, lots of greetings flying around. We won't get to do it in the same way tonight, and I apologise for that. But the COVID thing has made us very conscious of a few things, hasn't it, about ourselves. It's reminded us that we are all vulnerable to these invisible, unless you've got the right microscope, viruses. And in a way, a pandemic has been threatened for a long time. A bit like waiting for a big volcano in the middle of North America to explode. There are things out there that we know are looming. And yet, for much of our lives, we're able to ignore them, aren't we? And just drift along. Christmas every year is always on the same date. It's not one of these bank holidays that keeps moving or is on a Monday nearby where the government think it might be convenient. And yet, every year, it rushes up on us, doesn't it? However carefully we plan it, we work out our menu in September, we book the turkey in October, by November we've got all the presents done, start of December all the cards are done, and then on the 20th of December, we remember the things we've forgotten and it goes completely pear-shaped. Now this year, that doesn't affect so many people because each family is only a handful of folk coming together. But it puts pressure on us, doesn't it? We know it's coming, but somehow we're not ready. Now, as we've gone through Advent together, we've tried to focus, haven't we, on the past, the reminders, of God's love, God's hope, God's promises on the present of how we should live to prepare the way to be witnesses for him and the future being ready for when he returns, trying to anticipate his return, which is difficult for us all these thousands of years after he walked on the earth. But at this point, as the clock ticks down, I'm going off my phone clock, which may or may not be accurate by the atomic clock. As we approach that time, that is our main focus, isn't it? Not just to stay awake while I blether on because I've had more than the minute that I promised you. Not just to remember to get up early enough to put the turkey on. Not just early enough to check the sprouts, which have been boiling since about the middle of September. focus is purely on tomorrow. Tomorrow. How do we make that a great time of celebration? It's hard without the usual trimmings, without the usual friendly faces, without the usual arguments over who's going to carve the turkey and why Uncle Johnny got the last sprout without all the usual hoo-ha over who's going to put all that wrapping paper into the recycling. It's going to feel very different, but it will still be real. Even with this pared down Christmas, it's very easy for us to forget the real reason for Christmas itself. It's not that just the day after midwinter day, when the days genuinely do start to get slightly longer. And if any of you have got stopwatches, if you're a bit bored tomorrow, you can try timing that. It's a reminder to us Christians to think about Jesus, to think what he did for us. Most of us this year have given up an awful lot, whether it's holidays, whether it's not been able to see people physically in the flesh. But we've given up nothing compared to what God gave up for us. On Tuesday night, Margaret and I, and Max knows about this, so don't worry. Margaret and I got soggy bottoms together, reenacting the nativity outside St. Ninian's Church in Moniave. 
Now that felt like a sacrifice at the time, but the fact was we were all wrapped up and we knew we had warm homes to go to. Mary and Joseph in reality didn't have that luxury. They were in a strange town. They'd come from the north to register. They didn't know what was going to happen. They didn't know that a bunch of smelly, wacky shepherds were going to turn up with tales of angels. Later on, they didn't even realise that the wise men, the Magi, had travelled all that way and found them until there was a knock on the door and some strange gifts appeared. We don't always know, however much we like to think we're in control, what's going to happen. But God gave up all that he had for you, for me. And that's the message of Christmas, the light breaking into the darkness. That's why Christians put Christmas at this time of year. Because it's about light breaking through. A time to celebrate the hope that God gives us for what's going to come next. That's not just a physical hope like the old pagan festivals. It's a spiritual hope of spiritual light coming into our lives, into our hearts. And that's my prayer for me, for Debbie, for our family and for all of you this Christmas. That somehow in the middle of all that's going on, that light would break through. That, that, that light would fill our homes, our hearts, our lives. And as we gather as a church tonight, we need to remind ourselves that that light needs to spread to our community, to the world around us. So the light breaks through. We have a video which shows us that. You see, it's not just put together this, is it really? It's time for our candle lighting. Happy Christmas!
I've got a prayer of blessing for us. But as I say it, I don't want you to shut your eyes. I want you to look around, put yourself on gallery view if you have the technology and see the other people who are joining with us and share that blessing with them by perhaps looking up at them or waving at them or something like that as we share this blessing together on this joyous occasion. It's not quite the same as hugs and greeting in the flesh, but it's as near as we can get. And then we've got a lovely song just to round us off uh, in a few moments time. Christ who by his incarnation gathered into one all things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace and hope and love. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>